Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, in today's video I'm going to go over the last round game from Zagreb Open from December and the first round game from Zadar Open. And the reason why I decided to connect or these two games or do them together is because they are the two la last good games I played in the three tournaments this winter. And what happened next and what I'm going to start recording tomorrow is probably the two worst tournaments I've ever played and well I don't want to spoil uh, why and how I played badly but you will see starting tomorrow so anyway in the last round of Zagreb Open I was playing the the absolute legend of Croatian chess Grandmaster Misha Cebalo one of the greatest Croatian chess players of all time um, also uh, a gentleman uh, and a very well-educated person. Uh, Mr. Cebalo speaks uh, several languages, among them Latin, which he's uh, finished in, in college, and Italian. He's commentated a ton of tournaments, especially in Italy. He's the world senior champion. He has won uh, numerous games and tournaments, of course. Uh, and it was an honor to play him before the game. I talked to him about his game against Mikhail Tal in 84, I don't remember where, it was the interzonal tournament. So, I mean, talking to, to, to a person like that, like Mr. Cevalo, is really an honor. Now, as you can see, uh, his rating is quite low and he lost a lot of rating during the last couple of years and his strength keeps declining. He's getting older, he's not old, he's 70 and 74, 73, I think. So he should be able to to play on a high level. He won the World Senior in, in 2009. And I don't want to talk about it too much, but uh, he's not himself, which I was sorry to, to see and witness over the board. And I didn't really want to play the game. To be honest, and I just uh, I wanted to. Well, uh, I, I yeah, I'm not going to talk about this. So anyway, uh, I was preparing the game uh, for about three hours and trying to find out which variations we could get into. Now, Mr. Cebal always plays some variation of knight f3 or d4, which usually gets into one of the main lines. So I had to be prepared for both and for all the transpositions. He played knight f3. I went d5, which I didn't do during this tournament, or, or the other two, I, I usually will uh, respond with knight f6 now. And after c4, c6, uh, he played d4, and now we are in the main line Slav defense. After knight f6, knight c3, e6, uh, the semi-Slav. And Mr. Cebalo went to bishop g5, which I'd actually expected. And after h6, uh, I offered him the Moscow variation. If he took on f6, he went bishop h4, which is the anti-Moscow, uh, which I've also expected. And after black takes on, d on c4, winning a pawn, uh, the only way for white to play is to go e4, and after g5, bishop uh, to g3, b5, black is a pawn up, the positions are crazy, and let's say something like knight e5, h5, h4, uh, g4, f3, stuff like that could happen, and, and it's a crazy game. However, after d takes c4, Mr. Cebalo played what I'd expected him to play, which he's played before, and that's a4, which is just a bad move. Now, I don't know, perhaps this move used to be regarded as good or theoretical uh, during Mr. Cebalo's speak, but it's, it's just a bad move, and it's quite easy to refute. And since I'd prepared all of this, I, I didn't spend any time of my clock. I played a tempo and the next three or four moves, I, I had more time than I started with. So the, the move here is bishop b4. What you want to do is you want to be able to play b5 supporting your pawn once e3 or e4 comes. Uh, when with the knight being pinned, you're, you're not losing a pawn. Now, you might be wondering what about a6? Well, your rook is pinned, your pawn is pinned to the rook, so if a6, a takes b5, c takes b5, knight takes b5, a takes b5, rook takes a8, winning the rook in the game. So, bishop b4, simply reinforcing b5. e3, and now b5. 
taking wouldn't be good i'm doubling uh, black spawns uh, and then after bishop b7 a6 is actually possible so knight to d2 unpinning the knight and now a tricky move bishop to b7 and bishop to b7 indirectly uh, defends the b5 pawn because you're going to be able to play the move a6 uh, if uh, white now takes on b5 you take the knight first and if, of course, if white takes on c6, you win a piece by taking on d2 with check. Uh, he has to recapture, and once you take, you are a pawn up on the queen side. You're going to prepare the eventual b4 and create a passed pawn on the c-file. Starting with a6, of course, you don't want to rush, but you have a very good bishop. You're going to play something like knight to d7, to b6, to d5, uh, and uh, put pressure on the c3 pawn. And this is something I've had on my board before the game this position with bishop b7 and bishop e2 is the move i'd expected which he played a6 castles knight bd7 still what i knew bishop f3 and now i started thinking uh, bishop f3 i don't think is the most common move i did not expect that even though it's a logical move uh, i expected bishop g3 which I think is better uh, or e4 uh, so here I played queen to b6. The reason why I played queen to b6 is I want to play c5. If I don't play c5, uh, I'm not undoubling my pawns and I'm not activating my bishop. So queen to b6 is probably the best move because queen c7 runs into bishop g3. Queen c2, which I guess is natural, developing a piece, reinforcing e4. I castled, he went bishop to g3. And I now went c5. And after c5, black is overwhelmingly better if not winning. Uh, I think on a grandmaster level, black wins 95% of the games from this position and 5% of the games are a draw, barring a, a bad blunder or something. This is very easy to play for black. Uh, the light squared bishops have to come off. So bishop takes, queen takes. And this is the first move I did not expect at all. I have not seen before. And I have had a look at about 20 games in this variation uh, during the last few years because I've been playing the semi-slav for a while. Here, I, to be honest, I don't know what to suggest for white. I don't know what a good move would be. e4 is no longer possible because d4 is hanging. Uh, black is basically about to have uh, an extra pawn on the queen side and, and be able to win. So Mr. Cebolo went bishop to d6, a move which I don't understand at all. Now obviously if I if I take on d4, we are trading off pieces. So c takes d4, bishop takes b4, uh, d takes c3, bishop takes c3, and then his dark squared bishop would be, be very good on the c3 square, so I don't want to do that. And ideally I want to trade off my bishop for the c3 knight uh, and force the b pawn to c3. Okay, so I, I played a simple move. I'm not afraid of him taking on c5 because that doesn't work. So rook f to c8, which I think is the best move. Uh, rook f to d1. And now I decided to try and convert. Uh, bishop takes c3. B takes c3. C takes d4. Now taking with the c pawn is just horrible, giving me two connected passed pawns. Taking with the e pawn is horrible because c3 is a huge target. So e takes d4, the lesser evil, and now queen c6, forcing the bishop away, and knight to b6. And here uh, I offered the draw to Mr. Cebalo. He accepted, uh, and I was happy that he accepted. Black is completely winning. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I knew that. I knew how to win. I, I wouldn't have any trouble winning. Simply knight b to d5. Uh, if, uh, if the pawn is taken on... on on b5 then doubling up my rooks and the eventual queen a5 or rook to a2 would win the c3 pawn so yeah but and as i said i don't want to go too deep into that uh, because i don't think it would be gentlemanly but yeah i i'm happy that we drew the game and i was happy after the game and uh, my friends and my family supported my decision to do this Okay, so that's how Zagreb Open ended. Probably one of the best tournaments of my life, if not the best. Definitely the best concerning how much ELO points I've gained. Uh, I played eight games against stronger players than me, at least 200 points stronger, which is great. Played the Grandmaster, an International Master, a FIDE Master and a Woman FIDE Master. 
only lost two games, one against an IM, one against an FM, scored, how much did I score? I had two wins, two losses, 50%, yeah, four and a half, which is good against eight players, 200 points stronger than you. Okay, and the next day I traveled to Zadar, uh, to the next tournament. Now, when I settled in uh, my apartment, uh, I was quite tired because my bus was at 7 a.m. And the, the first round was, I think, at 5 p.m. Yeah, 5 p.m. And the thing is, you don't know who you'll be playing. And I was just in the middle of the, of the tournament table, or what, I don't know the name of, like, the list of players, the list of participants. And... And in the Swiss system, the the first person on the list plays the first person below half of the list. So if there are 100 players playing a tournament, board number one is going to be playing board 51 in round one. Then board two plays board 52, etc., etc. And since I was in the middle, I could be playing board one or board 100. So I could be playing the worst player or the best player which is quite stressful. You usually want to play a high-rated opponent in round one that takes off some of the stress. Uh, and yeah, and, and in the Swiss system, if you start uh, with playing a high-rated opponent, then your pairings are usually like that. That happened to me in Zagreb. If your performance is okay, you're going to keep playing stronger people than yourself. Whereas if you play a lower-rated opponent in round one, and your performance is subpar, then you keep playing lower-rated opponents. So anyway, in round one I got paired against an opponent rated a thousand. Uh, and, okay, so she played e4, I went for the Sicilian defense. Knight to f3, knight c6, knight c3, the old Sicilian d6. Bishop e2, knight f6, and the Sicilian is now my main defense to e4. I've said goodbye to the wonderful Karo Khan. I only played one Karo Khan in 26 games, 27 games, which is weird. Uh, D3 here, uh, which is a, a slow move, not a good move. G6, Bishop F4 again, very slow move. Bishop G5 is more active. Um, Bishop G7, Queen to D2. I don't really want to trade off the dark squared bishops, so I went H6. Here she played bishop g3, which is unnecessary and probably one of the worst moves on the board because it allows knight h5. Knight d5 here, uh, I took on g3. She took with the f-pawn, which is again weird, you should take with the h-pawn, at least activate your rook. Uh, and I win a pawn, uh, bishop takes b2, knight d5 just hung... Uh, hung the, uh, the pawn. Uh, note that c3 doesn't work because she loses a rook. So rook b1, bishop back to g7, uh, queen to f4, and if you want to pause the video now, queen f4 is the losing move, after which black has a winning sequence which forces, on a normal level, forces a resignation. So pause the video here, find the winning move for black. Okay, so what you're trying to do here, you're exploiting the fact that the queen is misplaced and that the knight doesn't have a good retreat square. So if you noticed, uh, the move e6 will chase the knight away. Uh, either one of these two squares loses the knight. So the only square for the knight is e3. However, that traps the queen. So once you play e6, the knight goes to e3, which she played. You play e5. And that's it, the queen is gone. You have the bishop pair, which is a huge advantage. Queen to h4 and now bishop f6 traps the queen. So e6 was the winning move. Uh, she took on f6, takes, and now the conversion wasn't hard. Knight d5, queen d8, castles, castles, knight to d2, king g7, uh, because if knight f6 I'm going to take it, uh, take the rook and knight for the queen. Rook f2, knight d4, uh, threatening to rid white of his bishop. The reason I want to do that is I want to play rook b8, bishop e6 and control the light squares. Uh, c3 takes, rook takes, rook b8, rook f1, bishop e6. As I said, I want to control the light squares. Knight f6 and now I just took queen takes, rook takes, king takes. Uh, and this is now simply a rook up. Uh, and what's the pawn situation? A rook and the pawn up. Knight c4, which 
I, I don't know, bishop takes d takes, king e6, uh, king f2, and now f5, I want to open the position up, b5, uh, c4, rook b1, getting to her back, uh, back rank and trying to exchange the rooks off, because once I do, in this position, it's just over. And she actually played until checkmate, I cut her king off on the b file, and queened my a pawn, and this is a checkmate. So I don't think I've ever played an opponent rated a thousand. Uh, it's still, I mean, you still have to think. I've still spent at least half an hour of my clock. And, and her brother uh, is a very, very good young player, a very, very good young Croatian player, much better than me, even though he's still about a hundred points lower rated than me. I remember playing him uh, in Split Open 2018. He was 1500, I think he's 1900 now. And I didn't take him seriously. I lost the pawn, then I gave another pawn up, then I managed to swindle him somehow, he blundered something, but I should have lost the game. So he is great, so I expected her to be a decent player as well, and for, for her age, she is very young. I think she is 9, 10 or 11. She plays really well. Okay, so starting tomorrow, horrible games. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching uh, and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.